morning, everyone. Welcome to our Spring Festival 2023, day five. And today is also our closing day. And we are very glad to see all the teachers here again. My name is Catherine Shi. I'm the Academy Director for Happening Mexico and Central America. On the panel on the screen, you will see our Happening team, our General Director, Kumba Landahan. Okay, our academic consulting team, Daniela and Luis. Daniela and Luis are also your host on the chat room. So if you have any questions, please feel free. Just tick everyone and write your question. They will answer you right away. And I'm very glad to see so many teachers repeatedly joining day one, day two till today. So I would like you to do me a favor. Send a heart on the chat room if you have attended one talk, one heart, two talks, two hearts. So I get an idea how many talks you have attended so far. All right. So um, again, I am very glad we have a lot of overseas uh, visitors like uh, from Romania, Honduras. And so you are all very welcome. And we hope we create a very nice environment for all the teachers to learn and to bond. Okay, now I'm going to invite our general director, Kuhn, to do our closing welcome. Thank you, Catherine. So, yes, welcome, everybody. And uh, yes, this has been quite a week. I think very fun and inspiring. You probably agree with me, I hope. Uh, I've enjoyed every talk so far, and uh, I hope you did, if you were able to attend all of them. The festival is almost over, and um, but we at Helpling, we will keep celebrating because we did publish this year two major new courses, one for primary and one for adults, um, called American Jazz Ring Second Edition and Marbles for the primary school. And for the adults now, we have four very solid options, um, you know, and one of them, of course, is studio, and today's author and speaker is uh, with us is a co-author of Studio. For this event, we based um, our selection of topics on your comments, comments you uh, expressed in previous events or at the questionnaire at B-Belt. So we started off with grammar and teaching grammar creatively, then well-being, then giving feedback, which I think, and planning feedback, which I think I personally love because it's a topic very few people talk about. Then I talked about motivation, and today we have the cherry on the cake by popular request. The topic uh, Robert chose was uh, teaching video or using video. I had a sneak peek of this talk, and you're in for a treat. So before I pass the mic back to Katrin, I would like to thank all the authors and speakers who took uh, part in this event. And I would also especially like to thank um, our team, the marketing people and the operation people and the customer service people who've been making this event possible. And then there's a special mention, of course, to Katrin Shi because she's the brain, she's the driving uh, power behind all this. And without her, this event would not have been possible. So we sincerely hope you enjoy this last session and we look forward to seeing feedback and suggestions about what we can do in the future so back to Catherine. thank you Kun, and thank you for the nice acknowledgement now we are moving to the schedule page i'm going to invite luis to talk about today's schedule thank you Catherine. so today we're right now having our welcome at 10 a.m at 10 05 we're going to begin this webinar with robert then at 11 o'clock, we're going to have a Q&A session. And please stay tuned because at 11.05, there's a lucky draw where three lucky teachers will receive gifts from Helding. At 11.10, at we're going to say goodbye and you're going to get your certificate. So please enjoy the event and back to you, Catherine. Thank you, Luis. Okay, now I'm going to talk about today's speaker. Robert Campbell. Not only he's the author of Studio, American Studio, he's also the author of a lot of our readers. And amazingly, they all won award or been the finalist on the Extensive uh, Reading Foundation. 
Robert has worked as a teacher and EOT magazine editor and author and a musician. He has written secondary and adult course as well as several graded reader. He is the winner of a Learner Literary Award and has developed, uh, produced audio and video material for many EOT courses. And Robert is something you don't know is Robert is currently living in Barcelona and he his favorite hobby and his now almost full time job is writing music. He started to write music at the age of thirteen. Can you imagine how big is the library now? And you can find all his uh, music in his website, which we posted on our event site. And based on our popular demand, because Robert has done a very nice talk about music in Autumn Festival, in our Autumn Festival 2021. Uh, and then last year in Spring Festival, he talked about storytelling, and this year he's going to share about all his idea about how do you use video in your classes. So we will now waiting Robert to turn on his video so we can officially welcome him. Hello, Robert. Hey, Robert. Hi, Catherine. Welcome. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you to join our closing plenary of Spring Festival 2023. It's an honor to have you again. It's great to be here. Thanks for asking me back. Thank you very much. Well, I think teachers are all looking forward to listen your talk, a video playlist for teachers. So you will have all the playlists after that. So we are going to disappear. Enjoy. Okay, everyone. Well, as I said, it's, uh, it's great to be back here again. I don't know how many of you were at the music uh webinar that i did at the helbling festival but uh this is kind of it's uh it's in the same kind of style so I, I hope you enjoy it this is what we're going to be doing in this session first of all i'm going to give you a brief personal history to tell you why i'm talking about video here today then we're going to be looking at how to use authentic videos and as with the music uh, webinar, we're going to have a checklist of things that you can do when you want to use a real authentic video in the classroom, how you can decide what to do with it. Then we're going to look at ELT videos, and I'm going to finish with a fun video project that I hope you'll want to do with your classes. So let's get started with that brief personal history. Here's my video bio. Now this is the uh, Odeon Cinema in Edinburgh in Scotland, which is where I'm from. And I used to live near the cinema. And my ambition when I was young, this picture's from 1968, uh, was to be the manager of this cinema. And, uh, but luckily I didn't end up being a manager. Luckily I ended up moving to Spain and the first school I worked in was in a town outside Barcelona and I got the job title of being video coordinator which meant finding videos that other teachers could use in the school and creating worksheets for them and that included music videos these images you might remember from the music webinar after that I started making actual videos uh in the classroom with students and this is something we'll be looking at later and then jumping ahead many years i started finding videos for course books so if there was a unit on new york or on food then i would search video archives looking for suitable videos that could be used as part of the course and then I would arrange for those videos to be edited and then create worksheets to use with those videos. And then eventually that led on to creating original videos, writing scripts, finding actors, producing the videos, and again, creating worksheets to use with them as well. And all that ended up with me becoming an author of course books and still working with video. And the latest of these course books is Studio, 
which uh, Catherine will be telling you about later on. Okay, so that's my video bio, but I'm wondering what your video bio is. I'm wondering how often you use video with your classes, with your students. So if you could just type in the chat box, whether you use video often, sometimes, rarely, or never, then that would be great, just to get an idea. Okay, so we've got a mix there, although sometimes is probably winning the race. Okay, that's great. During the webinar, I'm going to ask you some specific things where you could type your answers into the chat box, but do feel free to comment on anything as we go along. So, as I said, we're going to start with looking at using authentic videos. And that's when we want to build a lesson, build a class around a video that we or our students have found. How can we actually use the video in class? And the best thing to do is to have a kind of checklist. This is what I used when I was doing research to find videos and thinking about how they could be used in class. And the first thing we need is a way in. How can we get students interested in the topic or in the actual video? And one way is prediction questions. So I have a prediction question for you. Here it is. So the day after tomorrow is April 23rd. Can you answer the question and type your answer in the chat box? What's special about April the 23rd? Mm, it's Sunday. Aha. Okay, Jane has noticed that it's St. George's Day. Now, St. George's Day St. George is the patron saint of England, and some people celebrate St. George's Day in England. But here in Barcelona, in Catalonia, San Jordi is also very popular. And on Sunday, on San Jordi, people give each other roses and books. It's a fantastic tradition here, and everybody's out on the street buying roses, buying books. And that's one of the reasons it's also World Book Day. It's also Shakespeare's birthday. And because it's William Shakespeare's birthday, it's often referred to as English Language Day as well. So all those things happen on Sunday, but in fact, that's not the answer I'm looking for. So let's use a picture prompt. I'm going to show you a picture. It's a still from a video. Okay, I wonder if anybody recognizes that. And if not, we can use a words or title prompt. Okay, I see there are some people there who recognize a video. Let's rearrange those words to make the title of the video. Here we go. Me at the zoo. And here it is on YouTube. Now, if you look at the information below the video, it'll tell you that it was uploaded 17 years ago. And how many views has it had? 260 million views. Which is, uh, which is quite a lot. So the reason this video is so important is because it's the first ever video that was uploaded to YouTube. And it was uploaded on Saturday, April the 23rd, 2005. So 
we're going to watch this video. You've got to think this is uh, 2005, so the quality isn't fantastic. It's quite hard to hear what he's saying. There's a lot of background noises, but it's quite interesting. So have a watch and have a listen. Here we go. All right, so here we are in front of the uh, elephants. Um, cool thing about these guys is that, is that they have really, really, really long um, fronts, and that's, that's cool. And that's pretty much all there is to say. Wow. I think this video is so prophetic in lots of ways. For starters, it's really short. And if you think back to 2005, if you can think back that far, we weren't watching short videos. We were watching TV shows that were 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and films that were 90 minutes or two hours, but not short videos. But today, everybody's watching short videos. When TikTok started, the maximum length of a video was 15 seconds. And now the big companies like Facebook and YouTube and Instagram are trying to encourage people to create short videos instead of long videos. So it was kind of ahead of its time. It's also really ordinary. And the majority of videos that we see online now are also pretty ordinary. This is just somebody talking into camera. We know it's very popular and uh, it's also really good because is this a video we could use in the classroom? Yes, it is San Diego Zoo. Someone's asking if it's San Diego Zoo and it is. Yeah, that's correct. But this doesn't seem like a video we could use in the classroom, but you'll find there are lots of ways we can use it. So we're just going to watch it one more time and I'm going to show you a transcript so you can see what he's actually saying. All right, so here we are in front of the uh, elephants. Um, cool thing about these guys is that, is that they have really, really, really long um, fronts, and that's that's cool. And that's pretty much all there is to say. Okay, so there we have the transcript. We've had our way in. So the first thing we need to look at next is. Is there any vocabulary or grammar that we can use in this video? So if you look at the uh, transcript, does anyone have any ideas of, is there anything we could use there? Thinking of vocabulary and grammar? Simple present. Prepositions of place, this, that. Yeah, good. Well, in terms of, of uh, vocabulary, you could use it to start word sets. We could look at animals, zoo vocabulary. Or there's a lot of vocabulary there of words that we use in speech, not words that you often find in written texts. So that would be a really interesting uh, focus if we were looking uh, at this text here. Also in terms of grammar, maybe pronouns, referring words, yeah, things like that. As for functional language, well, this is giving a description of a place. So here we are, we're in front of the elephants. Again, it's something that we could uh, adapt to use in other situations as well. So that's all very useful language from what doesn't seem to be a very useful text. The next thing is looking and listening. Video is visual. And so describing what's happening in the video or what you can see should always be important. But not only describing what you can see, also describing what you can hear. So you could play the video without any sound and just try to get the students to think, what's the person talking about? Get them to speculate. In the same way, you could play the video 
and the students don't see anything. They just hear the sound. So again, they have to think, where is this person? What's going on? You could do the same thing as an information gap activity where one student is watching, one student is listening, and then they share the information. Another thing is you could stop the video and ask students to predict what is going to happen next or memorize as much information as they can from watching the video. It's only 19 seconds, but can they remember how many elephants there were? Or what color was the jacket that he was wearing? Or what did he say was, was cool about the elephants? Finally, you could do comprehension questions based on what they can see and what they can hear. So using as much of the video as you can. Also, you could focus on the delivery, the person's body language. Um, how are they standing? What gestures do they use? Are they trying to be funny or are they serious? All those attitudes that are really quite interesting and the stress they give to certain words. Now, there's also reading and writing activities. Most videos come with subtitles and on YouTube, often the subtitles are generated automatically and they're often wrong. So you could get students to look at the subtitles and to check that they're correct. Or maybe there's a transcript, as there is in this case, in which case you could work with the transcript with the text before they watch the video. Something else you could do would be to remove the sound of the person talking and get the students to dub the voice onto the video. Just speak at the same time as he is reading out the transcript. Now, I just want to show you this uh, teaching activity that's great fun to do that's about dubbing. All you have to do is find a video of an old TV series or a film and just find a scene where the language isn't too complicated and there's a mix of characters in there and try to find it in your own language so let's uh, let's just have a look at this voy a ir a la tienda por unas cosas vengo por ti al rato claro preferiría que te quedaras pero está bien hola Sheldon no, hola vine a cortarme el cabello con el señor Donofrio perdona mi tío Tony está en el hospital muy enfermo ¡Qué horror! El señor Donofri está en el hospital. Ay, ¿por qué siempre me pasa todo a mí? Ok. Yep, Big Bang Theory. So, a really fun activity to do with a scene like that is to get the students to dub it back into English, into the original language. So, first of all, they would translate the dialogue into English and then they would dub it, they would practice saying the lines at the same time as the actors. So in theory, their synchronization of the lips, the mouth movements should match because they're translating it back into the original language. And then if you have access to the same scene in English as well, then you could then watch the original version and check how close it is to the version the students wrote and to the translated version in Spanish. It's a fun activity. The other thing using reading and writing is most videos have descriptions talking about what the video is about, which is a text that you can use, and comments. Now, this is a comment I found earlier uh, that was posted a day ago about me at the zoo. And as a piece of text, it's really interesting. It's got some really useful vocabulary. And also, it's coming up with some nice ideas and thoughts about the video. At the end, the writer says, overall, this video is a fun and nostalgic reminder of how far we've come since the early days of YouTube. So if you didn't want to use the actual video, 
you could use some of the comments that are posted underneath the video and use that as the main activity. The students could then write their own comment or they could even reply to one of the comments that somebody has left. So those are a few ideas that you could do as reading and writing. But probably the most important thing with a video is reacting to it. What do your students think of it? Do they think it's any good? This is a great opportunity to really talk about, teach adjectives and get students to express their opinions about videos, movies, TV series, whatever. And at the same time, to discuss. In this case, this was the first video. They could pick up on what the comment said and think about how her videos changed over the last 17 years. Are things better now or are they worse? One other thing your students could do is respond to the video. They could copy the video or do a role play in which they act out the same scene. Now, I want to show you a video uh, in which somebody has copied exactly the same video. And I want you, when you look at it, you'll see that not only are they saying exactly the same thing, but he's using the same gestures, the same emphasis. He's repeating exactly as much, copying it as closely as possible. Let's watch the video. All right, here we so are. here we are in front of the elephants. And the cool thing, about, the cool thing about these guys is that, is that they, really, they got really, 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 really long, um, really long um, trunks. That's, that's cool. And that's, that's cool. And that's, and that's pretty, pretty much all there is to say. say. I think that's great. And I think you take a 19 second video, get your students to do the same thing, just working on that repetition and emphasis and gestures is really useful. Or you could get students to, uh, to adapt the video and make their own version, but apply it to a different situation. In this case, our friend Luis from Helbling has made this video about giraffes. All right, so here we are in front of the giraffes. The cool thing about these guys is that they have really, really long uh, necks, and that's that's cool. And that's pretty much all there is to say. Okay, so that's something you could do in this case with lots of different zoo animals, and uh, either they could repeat the same language that they've seen in the video, or they could extend it even further. Now, copying popular video formats is, uh, is a great way to get students working with video because they're accustomed, they're very used to these video formats, so they can develop their own ideas and they've got a model that they can work from. For example, I use how-to videos all the time. Uh, apart from trying to look at how to run a successful webinar, but uh, if I'm using a new music program or something like that, then I will look for videos online. So again, it's a format that people are very used to. Product reviews, again, is a very useful format for students to do their own versions of. They could talk about their phone or they could talk about any product that exists and give a review and give their opinion of it. This one's for the best portable espresso machine and I never knew these things even existed. Okay, an AMA video. Does, uh, does anyone know what AMA stands for? Okay, let's have a look then. 
AMA is ask me anything, or it's like a Q&A session. So again, you could set up your students to ask questions to another student, or that student could be a famous person. They could imagine they're a famous person like Greta here and answer the questions that the students prepare. It's a fun format to copy. Lists. Our top 10 favorite foods. Uh, our top five favorite words in English. And video blogs. Recording a day in the life. Again, is something that students could do on their own uh, out of the classroom and then show their videos in the classroom talking about a day in their life. And finally, unboxing. Now, unboxing videos have been around for a long time. They're a bit like product reviews, but in this case, the person opens the package that they've received from Amazon or wherever. And so it's their reaction when they open the box, they take out the product, they describe the product and they react to it. So it's a format that your students could imitate and copy. And I want to show you just one example of an unboxing video that's uh, not a phone. It's something as basic as a Disney surprise egg. Let's have a look. Hey guys, Disney Collector here with six egg surprises I just found at Target. Here's the SpongeBob egg surprise. It comes with 40 tattoos. Very cute and colorful. And that's it. That's all we got in this egg surprise. No candy, nothing else. Well, Believe it or not, this video has had 112 million views and they haven't all been me, I promise. I don't quite understand why it's so popular, but again, it's a really good model for the students to create their own unboxing or unwrapping video. And the nice idea about this one is you don't actually see the person who's talking. So if your video, if your students aren't very keen on appearing in videos, then they don't need to. They can just use their voice and use the video to show the product. Again, it's a nice, uh, a nice idea. And curiously, YouTube did a survey to find out what were the most popular words that users used to start videos. And these were the four most popular terms that open videos. And in this video, we've got, hey guys. And I don't know if you remember, but me at the zoo, he started with, all right. So again, it's another little thing that you could teach students to, to be authentic when they create their videos. So that's kind of a checklist of what you can do using authentic videos. Now let's have a look at using ELT videos. And what are the advantages? Well, first of all, you know they're appropriate, that there won't be any drinking, smoking, swearing. Hopefully, they'll be good quality. As you've seen with these videos, authentic videos that we've looked at, the quality hasn't been great, especially with the audio. ELT videos usually have very good quality audio they're legal to use and this is something that worries some teachers because they don't know exactly whether they can use authentic videos in class but if you're using an elt video then you know that it is legal to use and the other thing is they're just ready for you 
if you've got the presentation kit of the course book, then you know that you're going to be able to project the video onto a whiteboard. You're going to have the transcript, which you can show to the students. You're going to be able to do things with the audio and you're going to have exercises there, uh, which you can just click on and they're ready made and you don't have to do much preparation work at all. And also they're a great model because usually with videos, you're using them to show students something that you're then going to want them to do. And so with the LT videos, they usually provide a very good model which students can then replicate when they're going to do their own versions. Now, we're going to look at two ELT videos. These are two projects that I've worked on. And the first is, uh, is from <clears throat> an adult course book called Global. And this was a really interesting project uh, because the videos that we had to make, they had to be made in such a way that they could be used by teachers in a classroom, but they could also be watched by students on a small screen on an iPod or on a phone so the students could use them for self study and likewise with the exercises that went with them. So as with all videos, there was a task to do before you watch the video, while you watch it, and then after you watch it. So in this case, this is a beginner video. So the before you watch it task was doing some work with the names of uh, rooms in a house. And then while they watch the video, the students have to think, well, they have to listen out for which of the rooms Jenny in the video visits. So we're going to watch the video. And apart from looking at the rooms that she visits, I want you to think about what language we could use this video to practice uh, or to introduce. And if you could type your answers in the text box while you're watching the video, that would be great. Now, we made this video in the style of like a Blair Witch horror film. So be prepared. Now, we're in the living room of the house. And it's, it's a quarter to 12. There's a sofa and there's a table and there's a lamp next to the table. Wait. No, it's okay. I'm okay. Now we're in the kitchen and it's, it's five to 12 and it's cold. It's very cold. There's a sink and there's a table. There's food on the table. I think it's meat and potatoes. There are two chairs. Hello? Who's there? Where are you? Now, we're in the bedroom of the house. And the time is a quarter to 12. No, that's not right. Watch. Hello? There's a bed in the corner, and there's a table next to the bed. There are six books on the table. Wait. I see it. I see it now. It's here. It's under the bed. Hello? Who? What? No! Okay, I love 
that uh, idea that we could use this video for teaching weather conditions. That's a great idea. Uh, those are all really good, uh, good ideas you've come up with. I think definitely uh, furniture and just general house vocabulary is a great area. And also, we do do a focus here on prepositions of place. Yep, there we go, prepositions. Yeah, there's, there are a lot of prepositions in there. So after they watch, they can do, they do some practice on prepositions of place. Then they try to remember how many different uh, pieces of furniture, they see a list of furniture and they have to remember which ones were mentioned in the video. They watch again, they check the answers. And then finally, the after activity, they have to imagine that they're going to make a similar video in the student's house. So they have to write uh, a script about one of the rooms in their own house to, uh, to describe where things are. So that was, uh, that was from uh, Global. And now we're just going to look at a video from Studio, which is the last project I've been working on. And we use videos in different ways in Studio. But one of the ways is in the, uh, the functional language speaking practical English lessons, which are at the end of every unit. And we call these lessons 101 things to do in English. And I just want to walk you through this lesson so you get an idea of, uh, of how we use the videos. So first of all, there's a get ready. It's like our before you watch activity. They look at the photo and try to imagine what the situation is and what the man might be saying. Then they watch the video intro to, uh, to check their answers. Now, all the videos in these lessons have an intro section. It's a very, it's like the first uh, 15, 20 seconds of the video just to get students uh, used to the video and the situation. Let's have a look at that intro. I'm really sorry I'm late. That's okay. What happened? It's a long story. Okay, so after, oh, I see some people are mentioning uh, links to these videos. And at the end of the webinar, I'll be showing you where you can find all these videos. So don't worry about it. Okay, after they watch the video intro, they answer, uh, they then watch the main, the rest of the video and answer sort of three questions that they have to listen out for and then check their answers. So let's see some of the rest of the video. I'm really sorry I'm late. It's okay. What happened? It's a long story. I feel terrible. I was working and I didn't notice the time and it was freezing outside. So I tried to take a cab. I was starting to get worried. I couldn't find a taxi anywhere, so in the end I walked. I'm really, really sorry. I understand, but why didn't you call? I know, I know, I'm sorry. I didn't realise how late it was. Anyway, I'm here now, so let's eat, okay? Okay. Let me pay. All right, if you insist. It is my birthday. Your birthday? Okay, so what language do you think uh, we're practicing here? Uh-huh, apologizing and? Yep, that's right. There's 101 things to do in English. This one, in fact, is make an excuse, but it's also apologizing as well. So after students have watched the video, they do some work on the useful phrases 
that have appeared in the conversation. So they do that task. And then with all these useful phrases, we've included videos showing the actors just speaking those phrases so the students can repeat them with the actors. And there's also a focus on pronunciation. So in this case, they're looking at word stress. They listen to the phrases and, and listen for where the stress is. They practice saying the phrases and then there's a tip. And it's interesting that this tip is about repetition and how we can use repetition for giving emphasis. And the example here is, I'm really, really sorry. And if you think back to me at the zoo, because my head, I'm always trying to think of connections, you'll remember that he talked about the elephants having really, really long trunks. So it's really, really useful English. Then the students are given the outline of the dialogue, and then they have to create their own conversation using the one they've watched on the video as the model. They create their own conversation, include their own ideas. And then when they're ready, they use something that we call a videoscape to present their conversation to other students. And the videoscape is the background image from the video. Now, students can either just use this as reference, they could look at it on their phone or whatever, but if you have the equipment, you could project the background image onto the whiteboard in the classroom. So then the students would be uh, showing their conversation to the rest of the students using the image as a backdrop. So in 101 Things to Do in English, we use lots of different situations. And if you're feeling confident about using video cameras, or if your students are, they could use a green screen or use their phones to use the videoscape images as a background, because that's exactly what we did when we made the videos. Okay, so I'm going to show you a video project now. This is uh, quite easy to set up. I've put in a few steps, but you don't need to use all the steps. You can do what you want to do. And I just wonder whether any of you know this film and know why it is famous. If you do, send your answers to the chat box. As you'll have gathered by now, I'm afraid I love science fiction and horror movies. Ah, you don't know this film. Okay. Plan 9 from Outer Space. One of you knows it. Plan 9 from Outer Space is really famous because it's supposedly the worst film ever made. And the director of the film, Ed Wood, is also supposedly the worst film director ever. And if you look at these still images from Plan 9 from Outer Space, the one at the top is supposed to be in a plane cockpit, but actually the curtain behind it is the shower curtain from Ed Wood's apartment. And the uh, you can see the shadow of the microphone above it. And down below are the spaceships that he used and he went to a toy shop to buy the spaceships. And then he also used car hubcaps, you know, on the wheels to use those as spaceships in the film. So this project is to get your students to make the worst movie ever. And I can tell you, it's very easy to do. So they do this working in groups, can be quite small groups, or you can get the whole class to work together. And the first thing they have to do is to choose a genre for the film. Once they've got that, they have to imagine a particular scene. And 
you can give them prompts of the five W's and an H. This is something that journalists use when they're writing news stories. The five W's and an H are who, what, where, when, why, and how. So the students work on their scene. And then you want to focus on the two things that are most important about a scene in a movie. The first is the action. Now, if you saw my webinar about telling stories, you might remember that we used this image from a silent movie and talked about creating silent movies in class. This is a kind of variation on that, that you write two or three scenes and describe what happens in the scene, just using the present tense and including characters and a situation. So you give each scene to a different group of students. The students have to prepare the scene without using any words. They're just going to use their gestures, their expressions, and they have to think of a way to end the scene. And when they're ready, they perform their scenes for the other students and the other students have to describe what's going on. They have to give as much information and try to get as close to the written version of the text as possible. And when they finish, they exchange papers so they can see how close they were to finding out the truth of the scene. The other thing that's incredibly important in a movie is the dialogue. And a great way to get students to think about writing dialogue is to find a comic, to blank out the speech bubbles in the comic, and then to jumble up the different pictures and give them to students. And the students have to put the pictures into it, the order that they want, and have to uh, write the conversation. This is a really fun activity to do, and then they act out the, uh, the conversation that they've written. So those are just two activities to get the students ready to write the script for the scene from the worst movie ever made. Now, when they write the script, you could just leave them to do it, or you could do a little work on how to create a film script. For example, all film scripts start in the same way. They say whether the scene is interior or exterior. Then they say where the scene is set and the time of day, whether it's day or night. Then a description of the scene and the action. And then the dialogue with the characters' names and the actual words they say. So you could teach students how to write a script, a basic script like that. They then create their scripts. And finally, they present the idea of their movie, the concept, to the rest of the class. Where is the movie set? When? And what's it about? They present the idea to the other students, and the other students decide whether their idea is worse or not. And finally, they prepare to make the movie. This involves finding props, maybe getting some costumes, some clothes to wear, and creating some special effects. And here you can remind them of Ed Wood. If they have cars or anything like that, they could use old toys to create the special effects. And when I first did this activity, and I won't tell you how long ago it was, I asked the students to do exactly that. And I thought, oh, they're not going to really want to do this when they came to class. But in fact, someone bought a model of a monster and suddenly the whole thing came to life and they created a really terrible movie. It's so bad, I'm not going to show it to you. But although there wasn't much English in the movie, in all that preparation that they did, they used a huge amount of English 
and uh, and it was a really fun project to do. So we're nearly at the end of the webinar, but I want to tell you about something that preparing this webinar inspired me to do, and it's something I've been meaning to do for a long time, but now I've done it, which is on YouTube, I've created a channel and uh, I've put most of the videos that we've looked at today, uh, including the ELT videos, and the house is here as well. And all the videos here have subtitles. And let's just look. If we clicked on one of the videos, you'll see down here there's the title of the video and the level that it's meant for. And then down here, there's a description. And where it says show more, if you click there, then you'll get information about the video and you'll get tasks which you can use with your students as well, before you watch, while you watch, and after you watch as well. So I want to show you the trailer for, uh, for this channel and hopefully you'll want to use it. Here we go. So, what do you think? It's amazing. Okay, this is the address at It's For Teachers. And if you put in youtube.com slash It's For Teachers with the arroba, then uh, it'll take you there. I'll uh, copy and paste it into the chat box so you have the link there as well. So the idea, hopefully, is I'll be adding more videos and uh, I'll be including Pepe's song, which if you watch the music webinar, you'll have seen that song and hopefully I'll add a few more songs, ELT songs as well. So if you go there, click on subscribe, and then you'll make sure that you see all future videos. And really, that's it. That's the end of the webinar. So all I can do is say thank you. There's the YouTube address. And that's the address of my website. If you want to find out more about the work I do, or if you want to get in touch, then go there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Robert. I will first stop your video sharing so we can all see you. Thank you. It's so wonderful. I, you can see, I don't even need to comment more. Teachers are having so much fun. They learn so many new ideas. And thank you for being so generous to create a dedicated site for us. So you can put all the video you use in our spring festivals, talk one, two, three, and four, five, six, seven. I think there will be more to come. And uh, so thank you very much. I think it's so nice to start from the first YouTube video and to the worst movie you can make and to a beautiful trailer you specially make for us. So thank you again. Yeah, the, the video, the YouTube channel is launched today. So today is oh, a very first day. especially for us. So thank you. All right. I'm thank really you, Catherine. Honored. You are welcome. I'm really honored. I'm going to give uh, Kuhn the Q&A session. Well, well, yeah, that was a great session. I had seen the sneak peek of this, but this just, um, I was in the flow the whole time. Time just passed and I didn't even look at my watch. So that was very good, very exciting. Um, 
I had a few thoughts. And the first one was, so a lot of teachers are pressed for time and they can barely finish their, their textbook and the program. So how do you manage this video projects um, in, in, in a class when you are pressed for time? Well, the great thing about projects is that, uh, that you, can, you can pick and choose, as I said. Uh, you don't have to do the whole project. You can decide what you want to do. You can also decide whether you want to do the whole project in one class or in two classes, or probably the best thing to do is to spread it over a lot of classes. So you're just, you're dedicating five minutes, say at the end of each class to doing a little work on the project. And then it's something that students can look forward to. And it also gives them time to prepare material for the project as well. Right. Right. Yeah. And also, I guess, as, as you showed in the very beginning, you can use a 19 second video and students can produce these very short videos. Everybody has a smartphone, so they can easily do that themselves. So sure. not every project needs to be so long. OK, so then the next one is well for those longer projects, usually when, when students have to work together and like write the script together and make and make decisions. Um, you know, how do you involve all the students? Because some students are a bit shy, um, not so fluent, perhaps, and others are better and more dominant. And, and usually the dominant students take over the project and the, and the less um, skillful students perhaps are, are, are left behind. So how yeah. do you that? No, that, that's a great question, um, especially because I'm that student. When, when I'm in a class, I'm the, I'm the one who doesn't want to talk. I'm the one who sits in the corner. Uh, so, but the good thing about projects, and especially this kind of project that we were looking at, is there are lots of different roles. And so the student who's an extrovert and who wants to appear in the video can do that. But there are lots of jobs that other students can do. Now, I love writing, so I'd be more than happy to go away and uh, and write the dialogue with with another student or do something like that. So basically, the students are working in a team and they have to decide in their team, in their group, what their strengths and weaknesses are. And then they play those roles so they can they can play to their strengths. That's that's those are good ideas. Also, I, I was just thinking when you showed the, the, the one project, which you didn't show the video, but you showed people uh, you using old toys and props. Uh, you know, then the students don't have to appear in the video. The, the shyer students don't have to be there. They can actually, the prop does it for them. So, um, yeah. Exactly. Okay, very good ideas. Great, great ideas. Thank you very much, Robert. We don't have time for more than that. I'll pass the mic back to Catherine. Um, well, thank you very much for Kun and Robert for the Q&A session. Robert, I will let you have a break to sip some water for, and I'm going to introduce studio for two minutes. Okay, so uh, before I introduce studios, uh, teachers, if you are interested for all the talks Robert has done for uh, uh, our spring festivals, you can find all our recordings in our event website, happilingmexico.com. If you go to the past event, you can find all, his, uh, all our past recording there. And now I want to spend one minute to just talk about studio. So you have seen all the studio videos and then also the pronunciation activity by Nicola. And here is some quick summary. The content was studio is designed with the concept of 12 channels. And that means uh, we have 12 topics and this topic rotate. And every unit we use two kind of clear topics. So it could be education or food. And then the next unit will be living or sports. Then we rotate again. So every channel will repeat twice in one level. And then we keep going on to six levels. And that helps students to increase their lexical variety and also reduce the topic fatigue. Quite often, students get quite exciting in the beginning for the topic. But then after four pages with the same topic, they lost their interest. So we focus on increased engagement with students. And as you can see, this is how the structure goes. So it's history and then living. And we have very strong multimedia teaching approach. We want students uh, to be engaged. So we uh, design the whole course 
with the Generation Z. They love multimedia. And here I'm going to specially introduce media app. So as many teachers mentioned, I love to use the video, but quite often I don't have enough time or uh, after the video, how do I actually ask them to do more practice? Your student now can access the video with the media app. So with the book, you have a code and you enter the code to the media and your mobile phone, then you will be able to access the audio and also watch the video. And there's one thing Robert introduced in his first webinar about music. He especially wrote a vocabulary beats. That means when you teach the vocabulary after that, you can actually sing the vocabulary with like a jazz chance. And that is really fun. You can do that in the class. You can also do that after the class. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to check Robert's first video. And we will also send you the link uh, in our newsletter. And yes, um, you also can do the mobile pair work in the multimedia teaching. Students can do that face-to-face -face or they can do that online. And pronunciation is the part we introduced during Nicola's uh, feedback session. Our uh, EZONE have the pronunciation activities. You as a teacher, you can assign and your student can practice pronunciation, intonation, and stress. CLEO project, I introduced yesterday, uh, across all HyperLinks uh, courses, we have CLEO project. We help uh, you not to spend so much time to design the CLEO project. You only need to assign. Your student will receive the topic, they will research, they will write, and they can present. And one of your favorite is our cyber homework. After you teach the course, you can assign the cyber homework and your student will get the notice and they can do the homework online via a mobile phone or their computer. And you will get your results on your mobile phone right away. And you know how many students have done the homework. You can see all their grades. You can see their frequent mistakes. And if your school has a system to import for all the uh, exam results or homework results, you can also export all the homework results and to input into your student, uh, school system. And for you in the class, we have an interactive book. You can project the book and then you can get all your audio and videos um, for your classroom projection. When you are having a class, you also want to check your answers. You, as a teacher, you can use the teacher's app to find all the answer keys. You can also see the lesson summary, which will help you to write your school reports. And for assessment, we have exam practice, including TOEFL, TOEIC, Cambridge exam, and IELTS. And also, if you want to evaluate your students' learning results, you can assign online unit test. Also, we have midterm and final test. All the tests, including part A, grammar, vocabulary, function, and part B, listening and reading. The average have about 50 questions. It's enough for you to evaluate. And if you want more, we have test builder and online placement test. So contact us for presentations. If you would like to review the sample, contact us. We will send you a newsletter and you can fill out your information and then we will contact you. We can send you the 14 days trial code or if your school wants us to do a presentation. Uh, our academic team will be very happy to present a project, a product for you. And after you adopt, we will especially do the training for you for product and also platform. All right, now it's our lucky draw time. So we are going to announce the prize. As you know, we have 60 books to give. Now, Louis is going to announce today's prize, the final day's prize from Robert. Okay, thank you, Catherine. So today the prizes are Studio, then a text that is going to help you teach using art, known as English through art, and then two readers, written also by Robert Campbell. And remember that all our readers come with online homework and exam preparation. So we're going to choose three lucky teachers. Robert is going to help us. So Robert, are you ready? I'm ready, Luis, when you are. We are ready. All right. Here Good. we go. All right, so everybody, here comes first one. And the first winner is Jorge 
Lisa Raga. Yay. Well done, Jorge. Oh. Congratulations. Second. Yes, the second winner is Hortensia Lopez. Yay. Well done. Great job. Enjoy the book. Yes. Here we go, three, two, one, and the last winner is Cristina Galuyo. Congratulations, Cristina. Congratulations, congratulations for three teachers. Our Happling team will contact you after the event and we will send the prize to your home. For all the teachers who attend our event today for a live event over 20 minutes, you will receive a digital certificate signed by Raba. So here we want to say a big thank you for Raba for your great talk and so many brilliant ideas. Thank Amazing. you very much. Yes. Thank you all. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. And as everybody know, I will always end the session with the music. And today we have very special music. It's a song composed by Robert Campbell. It's called The White Light Arcade. And I would like to say goodbye and thank you. Thank you, everybody. See you in our next festival, or maybe soon, or hopefully. Bye-bye.